YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking the time. Today is Friday, August 16th, 2019. I'm super stoked about an update that I had done on my gaming hard drive for my 50-inch uh, Megacade from Extreme Home Arcades. I had the update done back in June, but I haven't had time to make a video, so I wanted to bring it to you today. Uh, I'm going to just talk about a few new things, show you some new games, play a few things, uh, show you a couple shortcuts and some stuff you might want to know if you end up buying one of these bad boys. I'm going to show you why I switched to the Xbox 360 style controllers. I now have four of them sitting on my machine playing for four player games. I used to have PS3 style controllers, which I do have them tucked away, but um, the Microsoft receiver for these controllers just works so much better than uh, the PS3 style controllers I was using. I just had to make the switch. I don't play them a whole lot, but for the games that I do use them for, they work super well, no flaws. And there's one last thing I'm super, super excited about is the universal search option that they added to the machine. You can now, right above the uh, Arcade Classics category on the main wheel, there is a search option above it where you can type in the name of any game you want. I will show you how to use a wireless keyboard, which I keep right up here. I never use this because honestly, nothing is more anticlimactic than a keyboard with an arcade machine and it just makes it seem really computerized, which these are not. The whole goal of the company is to have no keyboards, no, you know, you don't use a mouse, anything like that. But there are little things, if you want to get into the back end of the system and you want to tinker around with stuff, which I tend to do, the keyboard is cool to have once in a while. But in no way, shape, or form do I use it to play any of these games. You do not need it. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive on in, play a few games. All right, gang, let's jump into this. So I'm going to head up to the top of the main wheel. So like when you first turn on your machine, as always, you will end up right here over Arcade Classics. So I'm going to start from here. We're going to head down. We're going to see what's new on this last update. So I'm just, I've had it for a couple months and so now I have to kind of remember what is new. And as I go, I will let you know. I'm gonna turn that volume down just a little bit. The Jack Nicklaus Perfect Golf is brand new. This is a, uh, it's like a PC based game. Uh, Infinite Mini Golf is new. I think this might be new, the 3D Ultra Mini Golf. Uh, keep on going. Oh, I will tell you that they added House of the Dead 4. So we now can play House of the Dead 4, which is, I don't know if you like House of the Dead. I love it. Let's keep on going. We have Let's Go Island 3D, which is a sweet gun game to play. I mean, the, the storyline is kind of cheesy and cheap, but uh, this is, they had the regular version on the last update. Now they have the 3D version. I don't even know what that means. I, you can switch 3D on and off, but I don't have 3D glasses to wear with it, so I don't know if it even really works, but it's there if you want to try and play it in 3D. They did also add Let's Go Jungle, which is a really, it's a super fun gun game. Um, I've gone over the light gun features on my machine before in previous videos, so I'm not sure if I'll get to it today, but Again, let's focus on some new stuff. I do believe Operation Ghost is new. It could have been there before. I just can't remember. I see this stuff so much, it's hard to remember what's new and what's not. Uh, I believe Polybius is new. Space Paranoids is new. Moonlander is also new. Uh, again, I think these are all PC-based games. Uh, let's see. This uh, Row Type Dimensions is new. Uh, whatever this is, Darius Burst, that's new. The Hunter Call of the Wild is new. Now here we are into some categories which have been there for a while. We're gonna get to some more stuff that is new here shortly. Actually, this is new, Rival Mega Gun, that's new. through here quickly, try and keep this video as short as I can. There's just so much to cover, it's hard to do that. Uh, Age of Barbarian is new. A little racy up there, but it's all good. Raging Justice is new. Let's see if there's a little video for that. Yeah, 
Yeah, sometimes they have these sweet intro videos where you can see a little bit about the game. I love that. So Kapow is new. Slaps and Beans is new. I've never even, I haven't even played half of these. They're just there. I kind of hover around uh, some of my favorites, but I definitely take time out of my nights to go through and play games I haven't. There's just so many to get to. Uh, the Mummy Remastered, Demastered is new. Uh, this, I whatever this is called. Icon, Oakle, something, this is new. Ultimate Night is new. Full Mojo Rampage is new. Dead Cells is new. Uh, Hollow Knight Godmaster is new. Uh, I think this Spelunky 2 is new. That's been there. Actually, Tempest 4000 is new. Let's keep going. We're into some more categories. Okay. Some of these Street Fighter PC games are legit. I don't play them much. I'm not a huge Street Fighter guy, but I believe some of these are newer. I just couldn't tell you which ones. Tekken 7 is new, I believe. So Mortal Kombat Complete is on here. This is, it's wasn't on the last update, but it's quote unquote new now. It came out before MKX. And then of course we have MKXL. So they upgraded MKX to MKXL for this last update, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you all know, and, you know, we'll get into some gameplay in a little bit. Injustice 2, this is new. Um, honestly, okay, Dead or Alive 5 is new. Soul Calibur 6 is new. This is new, whatever this is. Fighting X, EX player, something or other. Um, a couple of these Dragon Ball Z games are new. I never got into them, but I know there's a lot of fans out there. This is new. Um... Naruto, Shippuden, something. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them are Japanese fighting games and stuff, which is cool. This Guts game is new. It's super bloody. So if you're into stuff like Time Killers and stuff like that, this is, I think, an indie game. It's just bloody as can be. It's pretty fun to play. Speed Brawl is new. Duster is new. Uh, Waking Mars is new. Brawl Out is new. I think this... Pang Adventures is new. Might be on the last update, I'm not sure. Um, let's keep going through here. Actually, Hill Climb Racer was on the last one. Super Tank Rumble is new. Some of these are actual phone games, like Madden Mobile and this Super Tank and Slitherio and whatever you want to call it, Hill Climb Racer. These are phone games that you play on your smartphone, but you can, they're, they're, set up to play on this. They're fun. Hill Climb Racer 2 is super fun. I think Sky Hill is new. Ben and Ed is definitely new. Uh, it's like a zombie weird game. Uh, Heaven's Hope is new. Um, Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek is new. This one was already there before the Hello Neighbor. They added this Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek 2. I have not played it. This Space and Zombies, Space Pirates and Space Zombies game is new. Let's see if it's got a little video. Sometimes they take a little bit to get going, but um, you get the idea. Let's keep on going through here. Despicable Me Minion Rush is new. Uh, this Double Dragon game is new. You need to play that. Duck game, I'm not sure if that was on the last video I did. I think it might be new. Overcooked 2 is new. Ballistic Tanks is new. Tank Blazers is new. This uh, Panzer Elite Action Gold is new. Uh, this is, I think that was on the last one. Mega Coin Squad, this is new. This is new too, some Puyo Puyo Tetris. Lovers in Dangerous Space Time, weird, don't know what it is, new. Don't Starve, I think, is new. Okay. The Bug Butcher is new. This uh, Chase HQ2 is new, it's a sweet game. Uh, Fast and the Furious is not new, but this game is fun to play, man. If you played in the arcade, it's a good driver game to play. Um, let's keep on going. I think one of these... Ninja Turtle games, Mutant Melee, I think this is new. I think
think tur this portal power turtle game is new. This moonfall game is new. American Nightmare, no, that's not new on this update. This Sunrise Overdrive is new. Mad Max is new. Versus, I think, is new. Let's keep on moving along. This Bendy and the Ink Machine game is new. For the Forest is new. Welcome the Game is new. Dead Age is new. Dead Island written. No, Rip Time is on the last one. Sorry, guys. I'm just thinking out loud. A lot to go through here. Carnivore Land is new. I think Resident Evil Biohazard is new. The Happy Few is new. Outlast, also another new one. Horizon Chase Turbo, this is a cool driving game. This is new. Uh, Roadkill Bikers is new. Uh, Carmageddon Max Damage, this is new. Need for Speed Payback, that's new. I gotta check that out. MK versus, uh, MX versus ATV All Out is new. When I say new, I mean new to the machine. It doesn't mean it's a new game, obviously, but uh, let's take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Hyper Fighter is new. Uh, here we go. Neon Drive is new. Pressure Overdrive is new. Paco 2 is new. I to check this out. Steel Rats is new. Enduro Rally is new. This Dakar game is new. I think Streets of Fury might be new, but it could be on the last update. Uh, Contra Evolution, let's see. Dragon Quest 11, this is new. Prey, Moon Crash is new. Uh, what else? This is Plague Road, that's new. Um, FIFA 2018 is new. Don't even know what this is. PES something 2016, some soccer game, that's new. Legendary 11 is new. Star Trek 25th anniversary, I think this might be new. Uh, X-Wing vs. The Fighter is new. This Jurassic Park, it's like a Jurassic Park world that you build, this is new. When the ski lift goes wrong, that's new, haven't played that. These are I've all been there. I think this Lego Superheroes Marvel 2 is new. Going. Here's your Madden season. Madden 19 is new. Mutant Football League is new. 2K19 is new. NBA 2K Playgrounds is new. WK, what is this? WK219 is new. Mega Baseball 2 is new. Hong Kong Massacre is also new. Goat Simulator's been there. This, what is it, Wormies? That, I think that's new. Tennis in the Face is new. Rome, I think, is new. Man, oh man, there's just so much to get through. I'm not sure what this is. Mage Initiation something is new. I know you guys probably know some of these games. You're like, bro, you're not even pronouncing it right. right. Axiom Verge is new. Tower Fall Ascension is new. Tron Run is new. One Finger Death Punch. I don't even know what this is, but I hate Five Finger Death Punch the band, so I'm super reluctant to play this. Uh, I'm sure there's no relation, but it just sounds dumb. Guns Go Guns Gore and Cannoli 2. Sounds Italian. It sure is. I had haven't played it. We got, what is this? Elevator action, this is new. Ghostbuster Sanctum of Slime is new. This blue slate, blue estate is new. Okay, so now we're down in the systems, we're in the consoles. I can go ahead and fast forward through a lot of this stuff because you guys have seen this before. Most, every one of these console categories pretty much has every game ever made for the console, except, I have a big announcement here. What do we have here? PlayStation 3. Uh oh. Now, the only downfall is you can tell they just started this category. So they only have these five or six games Afterburner. Uh, what is this? 
Scott Pilgrim 1942 Afterburner. There's only like five games. So with that being said, I'm pretty excited to see what future updates are going to look like with the PS3 category because PS3 is a pretty legit system. Let's back out of here. I accidentally opened something in uh, the PS3 category. Let's go ahead and jump in, pause this. All right, so let's get back through these consoles. We're almost done here. This Mega Man 11 is new though. It just kind of plopped in the middle of nowhere. This AMR 2R, AM 2R, Return of Samus. Samus, don't know what that is. <clears throat> so we are Oh, here we go. Leisure suit Larry, wet dreams don't wet dreams don't dry. That doesn't sound racy enough. That is new. And we are almost back down to the beginning. Got your flash games. If you haven't watched any of these angry video nerd videos, they're hilarious. If you want to just take a flashback and look at these games that you hated playing and how annoying they were to beat, this dude is hilarious. I think he's called Cinemassacre on YouTube. So here we go. We're back down to the uh, where we started. So let's just dive into this real quick. When I told you about the universal search option, here we go. So now we have a universal search option. So if any game you want to look for on the machine, you can type it in right here. It is set up to use joystick and button. Now you can use, if you have a wireless keyboard like this, turn this bad boy on, and we should be able to, there you go. So you can type in using the keyboard if you really want to. Um, like I said, I don't really use it. So let's just go down here, I'm gonna clear this out. And just for the sake of uh, simplicity, let's do, do Mortal Kombat. I'll show you something interesting about how this works. I will say that when you're using the universal search option, it does not find new games that are PC based games. Like if you got some weirdo flip flop, you know, style games that were added to it, this is mainly meant to find anything in MAME. Not everything on this machine is, is a MAME game. There are PC games, all sorts of stuff. So this is going to bring up every Mortal Kombat game in the machine. And I'll show you what it looks like once we get in here. Sorry, I usually do this a lot quicker. I'm just kind of paying attention to making a video. All right, so we're going to go down to search. And here you go. So now... It says all. Oh, there's 129 Mortal Kombat games on the machine. And if you scoot across the top, just hit joystick to the right, you will see there is some sort of a Mortal Kombat game in this bonus spin category. Don't even know what that is. This is uh, the Commodore Amiga. So you can see we have Mortal Kombat 1 for the Commodore Amiga. This is Console Hacks, which is basically hacked versions of home ported games for consoles. It's pretty cool. So now we have, in the fight category, these are gonna be MAME. So MAME versions of the game. Arcade Classics has 42. So here's where it gets kind of neat, right? So let's go down. We're in the Arcade Classics. Now if you're looking through Arcade Classics from the main wheel, you go into Arcade Classics and you find Mortal Kombat, you're only gonna find one Mortal Kombat 1. You're not gonna have, you know, 20 or 30 of them like you see here. But here's the cool part. Just because the company doesn't have all of these ROMs set to run on the front end so that you see all of them when you go in the Mortal Kombat Classic, let's say you wanna find a certain revision of that game, right? So Mortal Kombat 1, it gives you, before the video pops up, you can see it, bootleg, yawed in 1992, hack, 1992, hack, 92. So if you wanna, open that game we can go ahead and open it from right here i think i'm opening some hack version and uh we'll just see how it plays real quick but you get the idea it, it the universal search covers main games for now i have talked to david the owner of extreme home arcades 
I told them, hey, what's the deal? How come it doesn't find, you know, PC-based games? Like, if I wanted to play The Fast and the Furious, it's probably not going to find that driver game that I paused on when I was going through the game menu. Here we go. Let's coin it up a little bit. You can also shortcut get rid of the bezel. Let's say you don't want to see the bezel around the screen. You're going to hold player one start and hit up on the joystick and it will remove that bezel. So here we go. We're going to open this game. Everything seems like it's playing fine so far. Let's just see if the buttons are set up the way I have them. Alright, so yeah, I have this set up so the buttons. Now, I don't know what the hack is in this game, but apparently I'm playing a hack version. Alright. Now see something popped up. Normally it wouldn't pop up when you're playing in a regular game in the main in the main category, like in the arcade classics. Um, these ROMs, basically, they don't want these ROMs to be in the machine because you're going to play games and if there's a glitch in the system, you're going to think there's something wrong with it. In reality, every main machine has, I mean, tons of backup ROMs of versions of the same game. They just put the best working ones right up front on the main menu for the, you to find and play. But if you want to dig in, you want to use the universal search, you want to find a hacked version or like I used to have... Um, I think it was called like the Zeus hack for my Mortal Kombat 1 machine when I had the actual machine and you could freeze with Sub-Zero and it'd lift them up in the air and all sorts of stuff. But um, I'm going to use this time that I have here to show a couple shortcuts, right? So let's say you're playing something in MAME and you want to pause it. You're going to hold player one start, joystick button down, and that is going to pause the machine. So if you're playing any MAME game, you can pause the machine. Go grab a drink, do whatever you want. You're partying, you got friends over, you wanna go grab a beer, you pause the game. When we get into this, I usually pause before I go into the game menu. Let's say we wanna go into the menu for this game. We're gonna hold player one start and we're gonna hit right on the joystick and that is going to bring you into the menu for MAME. So you're gonna see a lot of options in here. Input general is gonna be the top option. You don't want to mess with this. What you're doing in here, I'll just give you a glimpse. We're going to hit player one start to bring you into that menu. And then you can go down to player one controls, hit start again. This is basically blanketed instructions for all of the main machines, all of the main ROMs that are on this machine. You can tell what button what to do. It comes stock from the manufacturer set up the way that you already want it to be. However, not every game is going to have the buttons laid out the way that you want them to. So the best way to do that, and we're going to back out of this by holding player one start and tapping player two start. And then we're going to go back one more time, player one start, player two start. Now we're in this regular menu that pops up when we play every game. If we want to go into the games menu, here's where we are. We're going to go to input this machine. We're going to hit player one start. And now you can see... Player one, up, down, left, right, block, high kick, high, low punch, low kick, block for, uh, well, there's a second block here, but you don't really need that. Basically, if I want to change my button layout, like let's say I want player one high punch, it's already set to player uh, keyboard control. You're not going to know what that is. Control and, um, you know, there's numeric buttons and all sorts of stuff that are mapped from these buttons because it thinks you're pushing keyboard strokes. So I wanna change player one high punch to this button over here, right? I'm gonna hit player one, it's gonna clear it out, and then I'm gonna hit this button over here, and it turns into keyboard A. That means that my high punch button is now this button way over here. Of course you don't want that, but let's go ahead and clear it out. We're going to hold player one start, tap player two, oops. Sorry, my mistake. We go back into high punch. We're going to hit player one start. It's going to clear it back out. I'm going to hit high punch right here. It's going to be player one, button one. That's what I want to be my high punch button. Now we're back to keyboard control. So it takes a little bit of fiddling around. It's not that hard to grasp it, but you get the point. I have 
high punch, low punch, high kick, low kick, and my two center buttons are block, and then this thumb button down here is run. That's why I had it set up like this, because it's a solid key, uh, joystick and button setup for games like Mortal Kombat, you know, and most arcade games are only going to have your six button. So anyway, that's one way to do it. We're going to hold player one start, hit player two start back out of that. You can go into things like dip switches, right? So if you know what dip switches are, maybe you owned this machine at one point and you have the PCB board. There's little switches on it to change how it coins up or if the blood is on or off, things like that. I'm not going to mess with it right now, but you get the point. If I want to go into service mode, there's two ways that you can reset a ROM. For example, if I were to back out of this game right now, when I come back into this game, it's going to be at the same exact place it was when I stopped playing. So in order to start a game over fresh, there's a couple ways you can do that. The easiest way, let me just get to the easiest way. So we're going to unpause. The same way you paused it, player one start, joystick down, is the same way you unpause it. Player one start, joystick down. Now the game's back on. But let's say I want to reset this game. So if I get out of it and come back in, I don't want to be three guys deep. I want to start from the beginning. You're going to hold joystick left and hit start. And see what it does is it resets the ROM like the game just got turned on again for the first time. It won't delete your high scores or anything like that. But... Um, that was a little hack that I learned from a friend of mine, a new Megacade co-owner friend of mine. His name's Justin Register. So uh, thanks for that, Justin. We're going to go ahead and back out of this game. I'm just trying to give a little bit of insight on here, let you guys know what you're in for if you were to buy one of these machines. So when you back out of it from the, a game that you played in the search category, it takes you right back to the search category. So if you want to get into search, you just hit player one start, takes you back in. You can go ahead and search for whatever you want from there. I did have a guy ask me a question a while ago about a really obscure game that I'd never heard of, and I couldn't find it in Arcade Classic category. However, I typed it in here, I found it, and it's totally a working playable ROM. So why it isn't in the Arcade Classic category, I don't know, but I know there's a way that you can move them from like a backup ROM into the main uh, arcade category, but I'll have to get into that in another video. Plus, I'll have to get a little bit of insight from the owner, David. He's the one who pretty much knows everything there is to know about these things. So anyway, we're going to back out of the search. Player one start, hit player two start, we're back out of it. I want to show you guys one other thing here too, regarding the wireless controllers. A lot of the PC-based games on here in the main wheel require a wireless controller. Some of them work with joysticks and buttons. Some of them require a wireless controller. How you figure out which ones, you just make sure you have at least one wireless controller turned on before you open a PC game. So I'm gonna hit this here. As you can see, it's already connected as player one. We're gonna set it here. And I'm gonna find, well, let's go to the Fast and the Furious game. It's a fun game to play. Find the game you wanna play. You start to memorize where things are at. So we're gonna start this up, Fast and the Furious. Now this is a full sit down game in the arcade, but on this we got to play with the wireless controller. Now, had I not turned this controller on before I booted up the game and then tried to turn the controller on, it wouldn't work right. So if you ever open a PC based game or whatever, one of these main wheel games that doesn't seem to fit into any sort of category, and it might be a, an arcade game that's still in an arcade, it's not like a classic main ROM, always just turn on the controller first. That way you can't lose. If the wireless controller is on, it'll work. If the game is mapped to use buttons and joysticks, it'll work that way. Let's go ahead and scoot this along. All right. Now, we're going to hit start oddly enough to get the game to start. And then we're going to use the left joystick. Times Square. Okay, apparently we're playing Times Square. Juice the thing that's a little jacked up about this is you got to use the joystick to select. Juice Watch. Eclipse. Off to select, and it's the same thing you're going to use to accelerate. So I've been messaging with Dave to try and see if there's a better way to get this done. But um, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and play it the way it is.
So remember, I'm playing like this. I have to constantly push the joystick forward on the controller. It makes it a little bit harder to build. show you guys and play at the same time as you get playing. I am all over the place, holy. The graphics are sweet. It's a super fun game to play, man. I had a few people asking me about going online with the machine. I'm sure you can connect your PC to Wi-Fi, like the computer that powers the machine. I don't want anything to do with it, mainly because, let's back out of this, mainly because I feel like once you're online, it starts to, things start to latch on to it, things that, uh, you know, I just like it the way it is. Let's put it that way. I'm not trying to play anything online on this machine. Uh, Alright, here we are. I uh, mentioned this game earlier when we were going through the menu. This is new with the summer update here, 2019. It's called Let's Go Jungle. Gun games are fun, especially the full HD widescreen gun games. I'm going to go ahead and let that boot up. I'm going to pull my light gun out here. So here we go, here it is, my light gun again. You guys have seen this before, but let's go jungle, let's check it out. And this is a two player game, so you can, someone else can grab a gun. Now it's a machine gun based game. So when you pull the trigger, it's constantly firing, but you'll only hear the recoil hit every time you pull the trigger. So typically I either just unplug the recoil and just use the machine gun. Unplug the recoil, you just pull a little plug out down here. It's, it takes two seconds to get through this. So it's a legit gun game. I mean, plot's cheesy, but it's fun to play. that sucker up with two people and have a good time. All right, here we are in Arcade Classics. This is my favorite category. I'm gonna go into my favorite games by hitting button six. That's gonna be player one, button six. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And then to view my favorite games, I'm going to hit player one, start. And then now you'll see this is a list of like some of my favorite games. There's an old school game that, uh, never really got huge. It was back in the Mortal Kombat days. They tried to make it like another Mortal Kombat, but it's called old. If I can get to it. Tattoo Assassins. I'm sure you guys have probably seen different main versions of this game. It's pretty ridiculous, kind of corny. Apparently they have tattoos on their body and they come off in the form of creatures and do stuff, but they have, I guess the the shtick is here is there's over a thousand finishing fatality moves in this game, and really it's just crazy corny, but let's pick this chick. Again, I'm going to remove the bezel here because it doesn't match the game, so I'm going to hit player one button start and up to remove that bezel. So now it's got a nice clean screen, we can see the game. I only like to leave the bezels on when the bezels match the game. If it's just a generic main bezel, I usually remove it. Look at this guy, get right out of the game. Pretty sure I can fart on him, this chick. Oh, yep, there it is, you know? Oh, see, look at that, take a fart in the face. I wish I knew some of the fatalities. You can do them on accident because there's so many of them. I mean, you can actually pull them off without even trying sometimes. Play one more round and then we'll back out of this. I 
like to find some of the older, more obscure games that never really got as big as, you know, your games like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and other fighting games. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on this machine. That's right. Alright. No fatality there, but it's a fun game to play. I'd say get into it. We're gonna back out of arcade classics now. And then turn the volume back down. Sometimes games are quieter than others, so I do wanna play that uh blood game. Alright, here it is, my bad. It's not blood, the game's called Guts. I'm pretty sure this one plays with joysticks and buttons. This is gonna be a, a game that you're gonna wanna give a fair shot to if you buy one of these machines. So Here's another thing to keep in mind when you're opening a game that's like a PC-based game. This is your trackball. I, you saw a cursor on the screen a minute ago. When you're playing certain PC games, this is used as your mouse, and this is used as your left-click, right-click, center-click. Alright, so let's do single-player. I don't even know what these are. This is single match. Let's do single match. Pick my fighter. <laughs> Let's go rando, huh? Jack Slumber. Jack Slumber. Apparently you pick your opponent's player too, kind of like New Mortal Kombat stuff. Cool, let's see how it goes. Hello, my darlings. We are very excited to have you here. Gory Land. No one is still not fucking Chow. Oh, he just dropped an F bomb. That's nice. Hilarious. I had no idea. We are all very excited. Okay, she's smoking me. And I don't have a leg. Okay, gotta get something on her. Okay. I got one arm and one leg now. That doesn't remind me of time killers. I don't know what does. Smoke me. Oh, I can still move. Okay. Apparently, you can hop around like a little torso. It's time for good old button mash. I don't see any other way out. Okay, well. Apparently, I can still bite or something? I don't know. Little Monty Python. I am indeed hitting with my nugs. Okay, there you go. Guts. I still need to chop those damn trees. Game, set them guts. We have Yeah, I recommend it. It's a fun game. We're gonna go to the main menu. Exit. See that sometimes you're playing a PC game based game, you wanna this is how you're gonna exit. Alright guys, let's open up Mortal Kombat XL so you can see how beautiful it looks on this screen. Um, mind you, a script will always run. See this little looks kind of like a Perl script. Whenever you open uh, like a PC based game. It's going to run a script, and what that does is it deactivates all of the USB ports on the machine so that the game plays the way that it's supposed to. And then when you close these games, it'll rerun the same script and it'll turn on all of your USB ports again so that you can play, you know, gun games and trackball games and stuff on other consoles. And the reason it does that is because 
Uh, first off, all of the gadgets on this thing are plugged in via USB. So when it dedicates its, uh, you know, it dedicates the RAM to playing a game and it doesn't want to have any interferences from other things plugged in that the game normally wouldn't have plugged in when you play it, it deactivates it. So uh, then it reactivates it when you close. Let's see if we should be pretty much booted up now. Here we go. And we are. So this is, the last time I played it, it was meant to be played with buttons and joysticks. Uh, I don't know if it's different for MKXL. I'm gonna play one player, single fight. So here you have the whole combat pack. Everything's unlocked. Don't have to worry about doing that. Go with my homie here. Let's just do rigged. Rigged. Play against yeah. Subby. Very easy. How about that? Pretty sick in my video. So we'll just show a little bit of gameplay and then we'll jump out of this. Zero. The Lin Quail. Oh, so start it takes you to the pause menu. As you can see, when you hit pause, it shows that you're playing like a Microsoft controller, like A, X, B, X, Y. So you just gotta figure out which one of these buttons here correlate with those buttons on an Xbox controller. some of these newer games because I know a lot of people would like to play stuff like this. In my videos I typically show a lot of uh, classic gaming, not classic but just older games, you know, mid 90s, late 90s arcade stuff, this because that's my favorite stuff to play. So let's back out of this. Start, let's go down here, main menu. Just keep in mind it's always you always kind of got to figure out how to get out of each one of the PC games. So Apparently, this is how you get out of this one. And then exit to Windows. Yeah. All right. All right, let me show you one thing before I uh, sign out of here today. Uh, we're in the PlayStation 2 category. I'm gonna open PlayStation 2, and we're gonna play a four-player game with the four wireless controllers. Uh, one, of my, one of our old favorite games to play is this ATV Off-Road Fury 2. Um, you get four people over here and you got four player split screen and you try to play tag and steal the beach ball and stuff. Oh, well, here we go. So I got all four players loaded up to play four player split screen. This is one of the funnest things I've played yet with the four player, four wireless controllers. I don't use them a ton, but again, if you're having a party or something, this is uh, the way to go. Should hopefully load up here real quick. It, Seems to do it quicker than even PlayStation 2 used to. So here we go, we got all four players there. I'm in the top left. So as you can see, I'm here. And then I'll grab, this is player four. If I had a couple people here with me to help demonstrate, it'd probably be better, but there you go, let's bail him out. So the whole goal is to just grab a beach ball, this one right there as a matter of fact, and uh, be the last one to have it. Whoever has it for the most time. There you go. So four player split screen works pretty sweet on this. Um, there's plenty of games to play four player games. I'm just, uh, I don't know what all of them are, but you guys, if you ever buy one of these, uh, you could also call David or email him and figure out how many four-player games there are. Let's back out. 
I'm gonna jump back into the search, the universal search feature. I wanted to uh, show you guys what I was talking about. I had a guy message me on my YouTube channel. By the way, anyone who messages me, I always try to get back to each and every person. So if you have a question, drop them in the comments below, ask me what you wanna know. I will do my best to answer it for you. Uh, the game that this guy was looking for is called Heated Barrel. So I will show you that this is not in the arcade classics category, but I was able to find it here. So if you don't find exactly what you're looking for, which every working version of every classic round should show up. See, it says it's an arcade classics, but that's because it's in like the back system. It's not on the front side to be played. So here's the heated barrel game. You can open it up and play it. And uh, it was cool to be able to find this game and tell this person, yeah, this game that you want to play is on this machine. So that is another great feature of the universal search that they have now added. So we'll coin up. So here we go. Heated, heated barrel. Never played this game in my life, but easily accessible through the universal search. It's kind of a shoot 'em up game. But you get the picture. So another question I had from uh, a YouTuber was about a pinball. So future pinball, this is my favorite pinball category if you wanna play like real HD emulated versions of pinball machines. And his question was, did we have, does it have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Data East, Data East. So let's go ahead and find it here. We're in T. If you want to know how to use the alphabet, you just long press left or right on the joystick and it'll take you to the alphabet and that's how you get there. So we're going to hit player one start and it starts you at the top of the T's. So here we go, here's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this is by Data East, so let's open it up and play it real quick. The pinball tables sometimes take a little bit longer than actual MAME ROMs to extract and play, but um, they're well worth it. There's a bunch of different views you can use. So here we go, we're coining up with the coin button and start. So middle is going to be your plunger. Hold it, let go. Alright, that was... It's really responsive. I mean, you really do get the sensation that you're playing an actual pinball machine. So there you have it. There's Ninja Turtles by Data East. There's plenty of other classic tables in this category. You got Terminator 2 and, I mean, pretty much everything you can think of. Adam's Family and all that's in here. All right, one last thing I want to talk about. I know this video always ends up longer than I want it to be, but I'm going to talk about these LED buttons on the play field. Yes, owning a machine like this does require some maintenance once in a while. These buttons, the lights occasionally do burn out. They're super easy to replace. And these are the bulbs that come with it. You can see these little tiny white bulbs. This is the white LED bulb. So what I did is when they started going out here and there, I contacted a company on Amazon called Ayla Lighting. And these are the style of bulbs that come with theirs. They're, this is what you see in my play field right now. So I have told David about it, he's aware of it. I mean, obviously he's a company, he's a business, he's gotta make sure he keeps his costs where they need to be. But if anyone owns one of these and you start wondering what to do when your white LEDs burn out, because they always go first for some reason, I have had these in for over a year with not one single ball burning out. I don't anticipate them burning out anytime soon. It was well worth it. I think I paid for all of the lights on my whole play field, like maybe 40 bucks. So it was a super, to me, it was a good deal. Uh, the lights work great. And eventually you're going to have to replace them. So there's that with the lighting. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I try to keep the video short, but it just never happens. Any questions that you have, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. 
I will say there's been a big question that's come up a few times. This play field is completely removable and this machine will fit through a standard doorway. The depth of the machine without the play field is only 29 inches. So it doesn't matter if you got a small door or a double door or whatever, it will fit into your house. It is a heavy machine. I would say it probably weighs about 400 pounds, somewhere around there. But um, if that's a concern of yours, no worries. Playfield does come off. Anyway, subscribe, like, drop me a line. If you need to know anything, I'll do my best to hit you up. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.